This is the Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast. Hey, family. Welcome to Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. Thank you for listening today. Well, my husband and I flew out to Chicago for his brother in love's funeral, where we attended a double funeral for our brother in law and his brother. I am soliciting your prayers for the Murray family as their grief is multiplied during the devastating loss of two brothers. Due to a solid relationship with the Lord, I already know and can definitively state that he will certainly see them through these most difficult days as the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. Surely, God is a keeper and he will sustain us even through our most trying times. Today, I want to impress upon you the need for a solid relationship with the Lord. As we endure such perilous times in this big wide world with so many things happening all around us, we must understand the necessity for true relationship with God. Now, Google has defined relationship as the state of being connected. Sure, religion is good, but relationship is of God and aligns with God's word. On the other hand, religion has been defined as a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. That is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community. Or belief in a God or gods and the activities that are connected with this belief, such as praying or worshiping. You see, religion without relationship is dead. It is going through the motions and pointing out what is or is not religiously up to par according to your own feelings and emotions, while either denying or negating a living, breathing relationship with God, full of personal opinions, ideas, and innuendos, but lacking the most important central necessity, God, and often absent from the Word of God. I used to love hearing the song, Have You Got Good Religion? And the chorus, certainly, Lord. That is until I realized that there is a segment of religious people who embrace religion as an entity separate and apart from a real relationship with God. God will not ask you about your religion, but he does desire to have a real relationship with you. Have you ever considered how hard people work to appear religious, to look the part, but willing to curse you out or scandalize your name if you happen to somehow get on their wrong side? God wants you to seek and forge genuine relationship with him, not for him, but for you. After all, it is most natural to be reunited with our maker as we are spiritual beings having human experiences. You and I need him to survive. We cannot breathe or live without him. Remember, God created man in his image and in his likeness. He blew the breath of life into Adam, so our most volatile part, life-sustaining breath came directly from God, our most sacred source. As a result of sin, beginning with Adam and Eve, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So our very nature is to lean in toward wrong before we embrace that which is right. Now, the purpose of the Spirit of God, which every living person must accept to interrupt and break the curse of sin's stronghold, is to restore the relationship between our soul and the Spirit of the living God. Yes, I said relationship. 
as God's word in 2 Timothy 3rd chapter in the 5th verse has informed us that so many have a form of God but deny the power thereof. In other words, some go through the motion so seamlessly, even looking the part, attending and holding services like clockwork, include every tradition and cultural norm, not missing a beat or a cue for their carefully laid out schedules, and everyone is brilliantly on the program and in the house. Yet so many, even among those putting it all so beautifully together, have no relationship with God. Hence, denying the real power and purpose of God. In Matthew 15th chapter and the 8th verse, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You see, they constantly speak of God, giving him glory, honor, and praise, which is really great, except it is all for show and traditionally lip service. But their hearts, the place and power of real relationship, is so far from the presence of God that it is utterly non-existent. I just want to remind you that instead of being in love with the idea of Christianity or Catholicism and its surrounding traditions, the social mores that have been the norm since childhood for some, each of us must forge genuine personal relationships with God. Anyone can study a religion, learn traditional order, and try to emulate the practice. We call that religiosity, as some people are in love or in awe at mimicking and behaving religiously. And many do just that on Sundays, some even on Saturday mornings, because it's what they do or what they've been taught to do. Many quite proudly from childhood. So the actions are as common as rote memory or repetition. This is how grandma, grandpa, mama and them, or Aunt Darlene used to do it. So this must be right. At times their ideals, traditions, and practices have nothing to do with neither God nor the word of God. Yet some have the unmitigated gall to either judge or condemn others based on the same personal ideals, opinions, or religious innuendos. Words mean nothing if the heart is not right. You can be the most awesome speaker, the most prolific speaker, teacher, or songstress for whom people are willing to pay large amounts of money and you can be in demand everywhere by the most elite. But God's word said, if God is not in it, it profits you nothing. Only what you do for God will last. You must know that it's okay to be religious, but without a true God relationship, religion, or religiosity, like everything else, will pass away, and only what we do for God will last. Are you involved in religion, or are you intimately in genuine relationship with Jesus Christ? You see, when you are involved in a religion, you hear about God every Sunday, sometimes every Saturday, maybe even multiple times per week. You praise and worship him. Your heart remains unchanged. The word said, wax cold. Your mind wanders wildly. The word calls it unregulated. From one thing to another, once your customary service is over, you return to doing all of the things that feel good or pleasing to you. You return to your same old habits right, wrong, or indifferent. No parameters, no rules. If someone upsets or crosses you, you speak your mind and heart as harshly, as ugly, and as aggressively as you feel necessary. Unfiltered 
and uncontrolled. You make certain that you get even no matter who gets hurt in the process. And if something comes to your attention or your mind, be it true, false, or a personal innuendo, you have no trouble spreading your ideas, your feelings, even lies. And often you feel and might even say, I've got to get it off my chest. I've got to keep it real. Of course, you really mean off your heart and mind because that is exactly where you are speaking from. Conceived in an unclean heart and expressing your true self from an untamed or an unbridled tongue. It matters not how many people get hurt, nor who is offended or turned away from God in the process. Even though God's word said, woe be unto he who causes offense, as it would be better for him to drown himself than cause strife among God's people. Of course, if or when those who lack relationship with God come in contact with the pastor or first lady, or church leaders, you work hard to control and behave yourself more righteously. But if those encounters last too long, your true self, unclean, untamed, unbridled, and having no God relationship, that true man starts to reveal himself. That true man or true woman, that is, starts to reveal himself and show out. Because wherever the spirit of the Lord is not, the spirit of error exists. Of course, that is how you know you are existing without a real relationship with God, but rather you have become religious. Furthermore, the genuine love of the Lord does not and cannot live within the same person who simply practices religion but denies the power of God when it is convenient. On the other hand, the power of God, which is evidenced by the Spirit of the Lord, is the only power that bridles and tames the tongue. Furthermore, when getting back comes to mind, the Spirit of the living God leads and guides one in relationship to pray for the offender rather than seeking revenge, even if it crosses your mind. Now, I did not say that he who has relationship with God is perfect, but there is a spirit within that guides, informs, condemns, and chastises one to act and react with reverence to God. Yes, such relationship becomes a governor for actions and reactions to stimuli. No matter who is or who is not around, the same relationship compels behaviors that are acceptable to God because the same realizes that we live in the inescapable presence of the Lord. He who is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, always, always present, all-powerful, and all-knowing. I need to make certain that you understand a relationship a real relationship with God is necessary as he is a keeper, a heart fixer, and a mind regulator. Going to church weekly, going through the motions of what is or has been traditionally acceptable, choir rehearsals and serving the pastor and first lady impeccably are all wonderful, but does nothing for your responsibility to a true relationship with our true and living God? In other words, religion is wonderful, but if your religion at the forefront does not include a solid relationship with God, if God is not the driving life force where he is at the head of your life and truly governs your every action and move, your religion is dead. Now, relationship with God requires intimacy. You see, relationship without intimacy is nothing more than an acquaintance. I repeat, a real God-ordained relationship requires intimacy, and intimacy takes time. 
if you believe and are convinced that you have a real relationship with God, ask yourself a single, simple telling question. How much personal time do you spend talking with him? The Lord, that is. In other words, do you have set aside time that you dedicate to him and only him? Just praying or communicating with him? Or only you and the God in whom you trust and believe knows the real answer to that question? Just think, if you have ever been in love, do you realize the amount of time you want and wanted to spend with your significant other? Think about the countless hours that you might have spent on the phone saying nothing at all, but just listening to your love breathe. In other words, no words, but just spending and sharing time together. Sometimes falling asleep on the phone in the name or spirit of just being together. The question is rhetorical, but most important, because if the time you spend watching television or hanging out on social media is greater than the intimate time you afford the one who wakes you daily, the one who provides and divinely protects you from seen and unseen danger, the one who gave his only son to die for you and me to save the world from sin and death, El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, awaits your request for real relationship. He who has extended his spirit, his precious Holy Ghost, to move you from the death of religion to the vibrant life of relationship, he offers you life and life more abundantly today. Family, we are living in perilous times, and at this moment, we have to condemn playing church and religiosity as God has commanded us to be holy, for I am holy, he said. Being holy is being clean, living a clean and set apart life so that the world knows who you are as you live in the world, but peculiarly, your actions, your behaviors reveal clearly that you are not of the world. The word says that such relationship makes you a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new, including your attitude, your response, your love language, your walk, your talk, your vision and view. Yes, your vantage point becomes one of holy origin. This can only be achieved by accepting the precious Holy Ghost, the loving, kind spirit of God, it is the part of God that enables our souls to live, love, thrive, and endure in this present world as it prepares the same soul to enter into the new birth of an afterlife. God's word said after that the Holy Ghost comes, you will have power, power to live right, love right, treat everybody right, even those whom you know are against you. You can treat them right. And when changed from mortal to immortal, God's spirit gives the reassurance of a home for your soul. In St. John 14th chapter and the 23rd verse, Jesus reminds us, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him which is really translated in God's word, he will never leave nor forsake us. Once the spirit of the Lord resides in your heart and soul, that means you've accepted the spirit of the Lord in your heart and soul. It will remain with you as long as you maintain relationship, not religion, but true God ordained intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. The most desperate necessity at this time is to ensure that while we may have good religion, we forge a real God relationship at the forefront so that intimacy with the spirit of the Lord will keep us peaceful and in perfect peace. For today, tomorrow, and forever, 
It brings endurance to the present. It ushers us in to our future and even sustains us to the end of the world. Today, I pray you listen and make an informed decision. So many claim, and it's a shame, they've only got good religion. Nothing wrong with going to church as it gives one strength and power. Tis only a part, but from the heart, a God relationship persists every hour. God's precious Holy Spirit overtakes you to fully navigate and lead. Not the work you do, folks, you hold on to, but honor God in action and deed. I urge you, get to know him. He will protect and provide. When all else falls on him, you can call an ever-present God. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me is a strong biblical tip to encourage you with words that are true, not religion, but relationship. One that is based on firm understanding and heartfelt, pure love that can only be garnered ordained and honored by divine power from above. It's all right to have service that is scripted, planned, and in order, but a God relationship requires no script. It is seamless and has no borders. Extending to all, not just friends, or available only to a few, but such a relationship opens your heart so that all can feel what's true. For it extends itself to all encountered, share love that's strong and real. So perfect strangers and those who are different never forget how you made them feel. A God relationship demands that you pray and always put him first. All goes according to his plan and purpose, despite what's better or worse. Religion without relationship is counterproductive at best. Like having all the right answers for a perfect score, but cannot pass the test. All the finest ingredients for a delicious hot meal, but lacking much needed fire. Relationship with religion invites the Holy Spirit to uplift, encourage, and inspire. Well, family, this is number 73 of faith, family, and fundamentals with Fran. I am so grateful for true, genuine relationship with God. There is nothing like knowing and understanding God intimately for yourself so that you truly do take all burdens, concerns, issues, and needs, even those of others, to the Lord. Most powerful is speaking definitively from personal experience about the power of God and how he consistently comes through. I urge you to get into real relationship with God and watch him do abundantly above all you could ask or think. I pray that you embrace and enjoy your own true relationship with the Lord so completely that you live the life of abundance. Only a true God relationship will result in one walking in truth And only one walking in truth will have good health and prosperity. After all, God's word in 3 John, the second chapter has added, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So at the forefront of your religion, get into true, genuine relationship with the Lord. Because such promises so many benefits that not even money can afford you. God bless you. On a separate note, please keep my good friend and former colleague, Sherilyn Birdsong, and the Foster family in your prayers. As she has suffered the loss of her best friend and my former co-worker, Lona Foster. The news of this sister's passing has left me lost for words and thanking God that I knew such a kind loving soul who had a God relationship not because she told me no such words have ever been spoken but she showed me her life was an example of kind loving relationship 
stem from true relationship, not religion. I will always remember how Sister Lona made me feel beautiful, important, special, and loved. So I say to you, it is okay if folks don't remember my name or where I came from, as long as they remember how I made them feel. This loss has also taught me to show and say, I love you as often as possible because life is short and we never know the moment that may very well be our last time seeing or speaking with someone we love. So if no one has said it, I speak from the heart of a God relationship when I say, I love you because I love you. I pray that you experience a true God relationship that brings you among so many priceless benefits, prosperity, and good health. God bless and keep each of you. Please don't forget to say something on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn page. You can listen to me on Amazon Music or YouTube. I welcome your questions, comments, critiques, and suggestions on topics you'd like to explore. Who knows, you might just end up being a guest on an upcoming broadcast. Remember, I'm just a regular girl navigating this diverse world. I'm looking forward to each of you. Until then, take care of yourself, each other, and stay blessed. The Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Log on to castropolis.net.